Welcome back to another episode of the Wild Wisdom Podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Fennig, and this is your space to learn more about the mind-body connection with strategies to connect to your innate wisdom so you can unleash the powerful, confident woman you're meant to be. Today's episode is sponsored by the Wild Wisdom Book Club. Next up, we're reading The Wild Feminine by Tammy Kent, one of my most favorite books, and we'll gather virtually to practice and discuss. The next series begins soon, so go to alyssafinnick.com forward slash book club to learn more and join us for the fun. All right, everyone. I'm so excited to have my friends Candy and Laura on today with It's You Guru. And... I have done some sessions with them and totally when I found myself very stuck and lost, it was just what I needed to help guide me and reassure me to move forward in different ways and to trust myself. So we're going to dive in today to some energetic practices and energy therapy, as well as what they specialize in beyond quantum healing. So thank you, Laura and Candy, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. So um, let's dive into maybe a little synopsis about your backgrounds. And I know, you know, obviously you two come from different backgrounds and then join together. So whatever you want to share with our audience of how you got into different holistic practices, what your background is, you know, kind of your journey to where you are now. Yeah. Laura, why don't you go first? Okay. The journey is crazy. Um, I think for me, it started when I got this really weird food allergy that caused my eosinophil count, which is one of your white blood cells to go to skyrocket. And I kind of felt like I had food poisoning off and on for like a couple of weeks. And eventually they figured out that it was food allergies. And I was sitting in the allergist office and he said you're never going to have eggs again you're going to have to start making your own salad dressing and I just heard the really loud no echoing in my head and I just thought there I'm not taking this as a life sentence so I started asking around and I ended up seeing an energy healer and that's kind of how all of this got started was my interest in finding other ways to heal that don't involve kind of the traditional western medicine so I just started exploring everything basically Sure. Yeah, my, you know, my entry point isn't all that different. I was working in corporate America, completely stressed out of my mind. And I too developed really odd allergies. And I thought I had become allergic to sugar, (laughs) which (laughs) seemed a little bit like a death sentence. Um, So I actually started working with a uh, doctor. I don't know he wasn't holistic, but he wasn't traditional. It was, he was basically doing a lot of blood work and kind of doing trial and error with a lot of different supplements. So at one point I was taking probably between 20 and 30 supplements a day. Um, and yeah, it was insane. I, it looked like I had a really severe illness because I was traveling for work. So I'd have to pack all these pills. It was nuts. Um, but what I kept hearing in my head was I kept hearing that I was allergic to my house and that I was allergic to my relationship because my allergies would flare up when I was at home with my significant other. And even though this doctor was trying to tell me that, you know, it it had all these things to do with my, you know, different blood counts and cell counts and, you know, all this kind of stuff, I couldn't shake the feeling that it had something to do with things outside of myself. Um, you know, the, the environment that I was existing within. So I ended up moving, leaving the relationship, allergies went away or sub- significantly subsided. And then finally ended up leaving my job and somewhere in between moving and leaving the relationship and quitting my corporate job, allergies basically went away. So that was sort of the beginning of me realizing, okay, there's probably something here much bigger than me that's, that's giving me clues and, and sort of directing. And I've kind of played a little bit with it on and off of not listening to my inner guidance. And sure enough, you know, the sneezing will come and the runny nose will come. And so it's sort of this tell that keeps me more closer to the center of my path where I need to be. Well, I love that because 
so many people, so many, well, I can relate to that um, with allergies, having had them increase when I was about 15 and, and just get worse from there. But so many people who are listening can relate to things like that. So I, that's why I love having you share kind of your entry point because many of us have been through this. And um, so, so then how'd you two get together? <laughs> well, so I, I met Laura through a yoga studio in Indianapolis. She was a teacher there. I was a student and she became really good friends with my best friend at the time. And, and so I kind of thought, well, if, you know, my best friend likes Laura that much, then I probably need to be friends with Laura too. And um, so we ended up going on this really cool vacation together. And then Laura extended me a really interesting invitation, which I'll let her explain. Well, I didn't really know what I was talking about, <laughs> but <laughs> I just can remember one of the other instructors at the studio had a couple of, a man and wife couple that, that are shamans come to their house because they were having weird things happening in their house. And the shamans kind of said they were living in this area where all these children, child kind of energies were, were transitioning. But this, in this particular place, they were actually kind of stuck between worlds. So the shamans cleared these spirits out of their house and they stopped having problems with their car dying when they were trying to leave town. It was always energy trying to stop them from leaving their house because the children liked these people. So I finally realized that these, this couple was coming to my yoga class on a regular basis. And when I put all of that together, I just, Candy and I were just walking somewhere in downtown and I said, Candy, hey, you want to go see these shamans with me? I think they clear ghosts or something. I don't know. <laughs> And I said, sure, I saw ghosts as a kid. I'm sure I have some hanging around. Let's go explore. <laughs> so we went together. We booked back-to-back -back appointments, and they're an hour and a half long appointments. And we went, we went together. We did not know each other that well, but it wasn't ghost clearing. I mean, it was in a way, but it was a lot, <laughs> a lot of crying and emotional purging and just kind of going into the deepest wound that you're ready to, to clear really powerful inner work, but we couldn't get enough. So we would go back at least once a month, if not twice a month, for probably a couple of years together yeah. doing these three hour long sessions, clearing our like purging basically. Yeah. So we went from being acquaintances that were getting to know each other to pretty, pretty good friends knowing more than anyone else about each other <laughs> real quick. <laughs> sure. Sure. You want to do a side note and kind of ex explain to the audience what uh, shaman is? Sure. Um, shamanic healing is, I don't know if I can explain that very well. They work with earth energies. If you think of like a Native American medicine man or medicine woman, that is a shaman. The name shaman actually came from like Siberia, but they would be the, almost like the original doctors on the planet using herbs and things like that the natural elements on the planet to help heal people but they also help you work kind of with your subconscious mind and your patterns so if you bring it more into that the present day they are in this work that these two shamans were doing in particular it was a lot about going into your wounding and even almost like doing time traveling back to finding your little child self that's stuck at the age of six in this traumatic experience and then pulling that child out of that experience and reintegrating your soul pieces that you've kind of lost over your lifetime. Yeah, they, they talked a lot with us about the energetics of the body and how every time you have a traumatic event, which you know trauma feels like a really big word, but it can be something as simple as mom or dad yelling at you, telling you no, you know, a friendship ending, falling off your bike. It can be all kinds of things, but anytime that trauma happens, there is an energetic disruption in your field. And it, you know, your body then learns to try to navigate its way around that energetic disruption. And so we, we carry that with us. Um, we disassociate aspects of ourselves and then we just end up with these little kind of pressure points, almost like scabs, you know? So when we talk about someone or something triggering us, it's because that energetic disruption is being pressed upon. 
there's something that's being attracted to it that's applying pressure. And so you sort of relive that wounding again in the present day, which is why oftentimes we, as adults, will throw childlike temp temper tantrums. It's because our wounding is flaring up. So they help to clear those energetic pressure points, clear that wounding so that you are a more complete, holistic um, energy body that's, that's flowing without, without all the traumatic scabs. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you guys described it well. Um, I I think it's important, but I know that a lot of our list, listeners may may not know you know much about that because they haven't explored energy work, which is why you're on the podcast. Um, yeah, I mean, not awesome. to interrupt, but like <laughs> I did probably ten years of traditional therapy on and off, and knew my triggers really well intellectually understood, you know, when I was in a situation that I was going to have a reaction to, I, I mentally comprehended all of my issues, but I could not get past them. So I couldn't get past not having the reaction. Well, um, and you were like, like externally rearranging your world so that you wouldn't uh, have the triggers. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I even remember, and this is a classic no, no. I, I remember telling you know, people that I would date, here, like, here's the things that will set me off or, or here's the things that trigger me, you know, let, let's work together to avoid those things, which, you know, now that we've worked with the shamans, I mean, what I should have been doing is, is leaning face into those triggers rather than trying to avoid them. So the work with the shamans that we did, I remember the first time I was in a situation after working with them where I thought, okay, I'm going to be triggered. Here it comes. And the moment came and passed and I had absolutely no reaction. Mm -hmm. And I like, just burst into tears <laughs> because I realized for the first time there was a way for me to get past my wounding and there was a way for me to become whole and complete and healthy. And that can be moments. You were free. Like it, it creates just this profound freedom because it's, it's sort of almost like traditional psychotherapy does what Western medicine does, which is like just lays patches on top of the wounding. And this sh 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 shamanic work and this shamanic work actually goes into the root of the problem and helps you clear it and quickly, mm -hmm. not, not after 10 years of shamanic sessions in yeah. like one or two sessions. Right. Totally. Yeah. I, I love that we're talking about this um, because one of the things that's come to mind for me is, um, and I've done the energetic work. I haven't actually seen a shaman, but uh, one of my favorites that I read about is um, one of the last shamans in Belize, Don Alejo. Um, and just as a side note, Dr. Rosita Arvigo studied with him for five years, and that's where my abdominal therapy, like she documented everything and brought that to the West and or to North America. Um, or to the U.S. <laughs> and because that was in Belize, um, just documented everything and, and all the herbs and because it wasn't being passed down. You know, people weren't believing in it as much anymore. But it, but I read uh, the book Sashtun, which is all about him. And so that was one of the books that reminded me that I needed to do the work in the world that I'm here to do, just by reading about him. So I think it's important. Uh, to understand for our listeners to understand shamanism, this energetic layer, um, and how it can be helpful because a lot of my clients, and I'm sure you guys see this too, they're coming and they're seeing a psychotherapist, and luckily a lot of psychotherapists are embracing some of these other practices, but not all, but there's more information coming out. But there isn't something shifting. And so they'll come to me, and I usually I'll help them with the body, um, the body, mind, and spirit connection. But I also refer them to a lot of these energetic practices that I'm not necessarily trained in, because that is where a, a huge part of the healing takes place. And I, I've experienced myself, and I've seen that. And I, you know, we were chatting before we recorded about my experience with your session, how that was so insightful for me and helpful for me in moving forward and things I want to do. But um, Candy, you had mentioned, 
you know, how we kind of uh, live, will end up live, being intellectually aware of our triggers. Then coming back after I just went on a little tangent uh, around to what I was going to say about, I've been seeing that a lot. And in my work, especially with the studio, I work with a lot of people who have trauma. I track those people. When I was teaching my Sunday night class, um, I, I knew a lot of those women's stories because they would come and tell me they were either my clients or they sit in uh, for a consult that I offer. And I provided a safe space for them. And then we, would, we also do uh, things for people with traumatic brain injuries. We've done classes, fundraisers for sexual assault, those sort of things. So a lot of people with complex trauma, different levels, come into my space because that's the energy I put out. And it's a healing center. But also what I've seen is there's also a lot of people who are doing that. They're living their lives in fear of being triggered to the extent, and I see this on a global level too, like societal level, to the extent of, oh, you can't say that to me, that'll trigger me. Or, um, we said, I sent out an email and, and, and someone responded that I needed to be more trauma informed and yada, yada, yada. And I just was like, okay, like the world goes on and we can't live in this little box of, cause we don't know, we don't know everyone's triggers. Well, and we, we don't need to know everyone's triggers. That's yeah. That's where the work is. So exactly. exactly. I, I mean, I, I think that's important to to note, and that's why I wanted to take a moment about that because it's important to note that at some point you have to move on. Does it dismiss? Because I've had drama as well. It doesn't dismiss what has happened to you, but you have to move on. You can't stay stuck within that and expect it to shift and everyone else to walk on eggshells around you. Right. Well, that's the key, right? I mean, as an individual, you can totally stay stuck in your story and you can choose not to shift out of it. But if you want to make a change in your life, um, you know, which is where Laura and I both had been at different points in our lives, wanting, knowing that there was something more that we wanted to make change, that we wanted to have a clearer, healthier experience on this planet. The only way to make that happen is to start to face these issues and they present themselves in all kinds of ways. It can be physical, it can be mental, it can be emotional, it can be disease in the body, it can be food. Um, you know, it, it, it can be a myriad of ways that it presents, but if you're not listening and not starting to do your work of healing, then these symptoms start cranking up. So they work to get your attention more and more and more. And I think that's why we see, you know, more cases of, disease and, and a planet that's just not healthy is because we have been conditioned to tell people, this is my story. This is the box that I live in. This is how I need you to handle me. I need you to be fragile with me because, you know, I've, I've got all of these issues that I'm dealing with. I use air quotes dealing with because in essence, if you're doing any of that, you're really not dealing with it. But, um, you know, we, Laura and I were talking about this the other day and I don't want to go on this tangent just yet, but Political correctness is symptomatic of this. I mean, we are so worried about saying something that hurts someone that we hold our own words back. And, and oftentimes words that we might even mean from the most loving and sincere perspective, but we were filtering so much because of someone else's, how they might take it, someone else's wounding. And so, you know, if, if, if you work on yourself and you can heal a lot of the wounds and you can integrate a lot of those soul pieces, you should be able to exist on this planet without being triggered. I well, mean, I, go, go ahead. ahead, Candy. I was just going to say, I, I know that I can be in situations now where I would have reacted before and someone can say something that has been said a million times to me in the past that would have just gotten my go and fired me up. And I can hear it now and be like, yeah, okay, so you're dealing with something I'm, I'm not, you know, like that doesn't bother me anymore. Mm. Well, part, 
and part of it's because it's it's not true anymore and that totally. we use this we use this example a lot Alyssa let's see if this if this triggers you Alyssa you are such a plastic bag <laughs> exactly you see there's there's no part of you that believes that to be true so there's you're not triggered by it yeah you're triggered when you know deep down that you're res like you resonate with that sure. comment or that and that's where kind of like Kenny brought up that political correctness thing if you're triggered by someone else's words then you have work to do inside of your yourself yeah completely right the the, the fear is that they're seeing that part of you for what you think it is mm -hmm. you know like if someone says you're such a b word you're such a bitch well if that hurts and that fires you up it's because there's a part of you that thinks that there's a part of you that is that and you know that's the part that needs healing that's the part that's wounded that's the part that's hurt yeah yeah totally totally agree i love how this conversation well we use i like this other no, you're fine i like this other um example that I heard from an astrologer once actually he said imagine or think of the color red and if I ask Candy what she thinks about the color red and I tell you what I think about the color red and Alyssa you tell us what you think about the color red some people have really happy memories of it they hate it it reminds them of love or blood or Taylor Swift or whatever <laughs> <laughs> but, <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> she has a song the color uh -oh. red is just the color red it hasn't done anything but be red mm. and that's the idea of how we're supposed to all be treating each other it's like you know candy hasn't done anything but be candy if i'm going to be pissed off at candy about being candy that's my problem mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. totally true totally true i love that example and i had no idea because i'm obviously not into taylor swift so <laughs> Um, I had no idea what she had to do with the color. <laughs> we went to her concert. Oh, okay. it, was, it was actually really, really good. <laughs> it was. I am just totally. It has, it has a good vibe because it's a lot of young girls that are so excited and not a lot of drunk people. It's amazing. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, um, maybe I'll check that out eventually. But yeah, no, I'm totally disconnected from that <laughs> for sure. Um, well, great. I love, like I said, I love how this conversation is going because I think this is essential for what people need to know um, and, and why I have guests on the show because you're going to explain things way differently than I can. You come from a different place, your own experiences, your own expertise. So let's um, dive in even deeper. So we can talk about the beyond quantum healing and how you got into that or, or something, maybe a precursor before that. Totally up to you. Yeah, no, I think, um, so, so we got it, Laura and I both got in it for pretty similar reasons. Um, you know, we're, we're both yoga teachers. So we had been working a lot with students who were, you know, dealing with trauma or injuries in the body, which is key, right? There's the physical body, mental body, emotional body, energetic body. Like we've got to work on all the aspects. Um, and we had also become Reiki masters. So we were working with clients on an, an energetic level. And um, because we both had been working a lot on, on clearing and tapping into wisdom that can't be seen, um, I, I would start more, we both would start to get clients at the end of sessions that would ask us, you know, what did you see? Did you get any additional information? Can you, you know, help me with this issue? And I personally started to feel a lot of pressure around it that I needed to have some sort of divine message to share at the end of a session because people just had this yearning for this additional guidance. And it made me really uncomfortable that, that they were looking to me to give them information and to kind of direct them or to share something to change their life in some way. And um, I actually kind of stopped doing Reiki because of it. Cause I just, I didn't like feeling like I was, I was telling someone their truth. Um, and so with quantum healing, with beyond quantum healing, we, we both had an independent thought of taking the training and then finally had the discussion between each other. So we, we did the, the training together and it connected all these dots of, of trainings that we had done before, interests that we had, um, ways that we had been approaching life and healing 
But what it did that nothing else before had done for us was it put the client in charge. Mm -hmm. They're communicating with their higher wisdom, whatever that means to them. And they're getting the answers or they're giving us permission to serve as a surrogate and assist them in getting that information. But it's still their information being delivered to them in their voice, using their words. And for me, it, it, (laughs) it connected these dots of what I've always wanted to do, which is just help people trust themselves, empower them. And we get to do that every time we do a beyond quantum healing session with someone. I love that. Um, I was just interviewing another guest for another episode and we were talking about that, how you are, can, are your own healer. It's trusting yourself and knowing, and they, there's people who help guide you, but they shouldn't be miraculously healing you um, because they're really just guides and facilitators. And we need those people in our life. Uh, but ultimately we all know the answers just like when you mentioned candy how you with with your allergies like you had a sense of what it was but your rational mind probably overrode it so totally Totally right because i didn't trust myself exactly exactly so um so I, i just love that because putting the power back to the individual is what we're all supposed to be doing is shifting that back. We are guides, facilitators, but not, I I don't even like the word healer. I I certainly don't use it for myself, but um, because there, we do need assistance from time to time, just like the shamanic, you know, assistance and shamanic healing, but that's really helpful. We need that. But I I really enjoy, and I enjoyed my session. Um, So, yeah, share more about what all of that's like. Well, and I just want to add something to what you just said, which is I do really believe that we are all carrying messages for each other. Hmm. So you're getting, I mean, that's why it's helpful to work with other people is because they're reflecting back to you that, that knowledge. And a lot of times what we have, what our clients say, even if they do a surrogate session is it was like you were reading my mind and Candy and I are just completely clearing ourselves out and letting the higher wisdom from that person come through us and we're just translating it into words. So it's like, you know, we'll, there'll be pictures that people see when they go into the quantum healing experience or they'll get words, but it is a long process to, in my mind, at least it took me a really long time. And I know it took Candy a really long time and a lot of clearing work to allow yourself to be open to that and to trust it. And a lot of confirmation. So when people out there that are listening to this are trying to learn how to trust themselves, it is affirming when you are correct about something or when you get that, you, you've got that piece of information, whether it was a song on the radio or whether you saw some numbers on a clock somewhere and, or you asked a question aloud and the person, or you asked a question in your head and the person walking by you on the street said something out loud that almost answered it. It's, it's starting to kind of affirm that you're seeing out there in the universe the things that you, you need to, the information that you need to get to kind of move forward in your life and going through that like trusting process. So what I love about quantum healing is the concept of quantum. And if you've ever read any, Deepak Chopra write, writes a ton about quantum energy. Um, Bruce Lipton writes about quantum energy. And it's a field of science that we just don't have that much information yet coming from the quantum world, but they keep making little baby steps forward to understand that the world is the the way, the world that we, the way we see the world right now, isn't really how it is. It's, there's so much more happening on the invisible level. And if you're interested in learning about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, I would suggest the biology of belief would be a really good place to start that book Hmm. because it's all about how your beliefs are affecting your physical body and the thoughts that are that seem like nothing are affecting your um, even your genes. And that's an entire, entirely different field of study epigenetics, which is how the outside world is affecting your DNA. So there's just so much happening. And I feel like we kind of get kind of sucked into just the physical world, but 
there's so much happening beyond that. And the quantum healing experience actually gets to show you what that is. So my first experience when I went into the quantum bubble is what we call it. I mean, I got up out of it and I definitely had used the F word in that first time because <laughs> I was like, what the F just happened? And Katie had the same reaction. And all the people that we put in, um, the first like handful of people that we got to p- play with had that same reaction when they got out. They were just like, what just happened? Because it's creating this really safe, structured place and clear connection to the higher, your higher selves, which would be, let's call it your higher self to make it simple. It's the aspect of you or the part of you that is not kind of bogged down by the physical world that we live in. It just, it's the eagle eye version of your life. If you were an eagle and you're flying above the river, you could kind of see forward and backward and side to side. You get a much bigger picture. And that's what you're really tapping into when you are in the quantum bubble connected to your higher self. Yeah, I liken it to, you know, we, we talk, remember the old school telephones where you actually held the receiver to your ear and then it was connected to the phone device and then it plugged into the wall and then it went kind of off into nowhere, you know, or at least followed lines. Well, now we have, we have cell phones that are, aren't connected to anything, yet we're still able to talk to each other because we're, that information is being transmitted through the air. Well, the same thing exists within the quantum bubble. You're, our higher selves, our higher consciousness is communicating with each other. We're, we're able to tap into information that's all around us that we can't see. So, you know, one of my, one of the clients that we did assist with, it was, it was actually my mom and um, she's super open. Um, and I, I love her so much for the fact that she really entertains a lot of the weird stuff that I talk about. Um, but I was super surprised when she booked a session. I, didn't really think that it would be something that she would be interested in. So we did a session. I was under, I was the one tapping into her higher consciousness and bringing information down for her. And I mean, she was asking questions that I didn't know answers to questions that I didn't even know she had. And I followed up with her afterwards and asked her what she thought. And she said that it was really creepy to have me in her head, that I was saying to her the exact thoughts that she was hearing in her head. Like she would think these questions to herself. She would hear herself answer it, but she just discarded it. But I was in the quantum bubble answering her questions using her exact same phrasing. Mm. And I was like, that's awesome. And just so you're reassured, I could not see anything. I could not hear anything beyond what you were asking me. Like I couldn't go snooping around inside your head looking for info. Like it's, it really is kind of a call and response action that happens. But um, I thought that was really cool because she, I don't want to say was a skeptic, but I think she kind of came in just to sort of see what her daughter was up to. <laughs> sure, sure, of course. Yeah, no, I'm sure that was an interesting thing between the two of you and afterwards evaluating it. So, well, good. That's amazing. And what, how wonderful to have your mom be so supportive, even if she was skeptical at first, but it's, it's nice to have them be supportive. So I, I know I really loved my session. And the unique thing for me was, um, well, not only all the information, like when I listened to my recorded session again, because I didn't take notes when we did it, I was just trying to be present, but um, I listened again and I wrote down things, I probably had three pages worth of things of just kind of reminding me and keeping them there. And that's how my brain works. So um, it was nice to, for me to listen again and write those down. Um, but it's true, uh, deep down, a lot of things you know, um, but like, like I mentioned before, it was so helpful for me at that point in my life because I just needed some insight, some confirmation, you know, um, that you were talking about, you know, different signs and, and things like that. And I, I see those a lot. Um, I work a lot with animal spirit guides. Like they're always in my dreams and always, everywhere but you know there's lots of signs and messengers but i just needed that guidance and it was really really helpful so what i'd like if you'd share we've kind of you know, touched on what this is if for our listeners out there if they were going to do a session with you on beyond quantum healing which is you call uh bqh right so right. 
what does that look like? Because I know, and I could explain it, but I want you to. Well, we have a few different options. And Candy and I kind of just, I don't know if it's because we're Gen X or what, but we're always like, we're just not going to do it the normal way. We're going to do it this other way. <laughs> so, <laughs> Probably Gen X because I feel the same. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you can get these. The typical BQH session is four to five hours long and several hundred dollars. Oh my. And yes. And so you, you go through a series of guided meditations to, to regress your doubt mind and to get the higher consciousness to come in. And, and then at the end, there's a big healing. And then you kind of come out of that session, but you're basically laying down, your eyes are closed and you're being walked into this deeper and deeper meditative state. That is a struggle for Candy and I. And so we decided because we just, it just takes, it's so much time and so much money. And we just were like, how many people are really going to be able to afford to do this? And sure. who has right. four to five hours? Yeah. So, and, and what we started, what we are experiencing with clients when we were doing it the traditional way is the doubt mind is still so present that they would answer a question and we could totally tell they were connected to their higher self. And then they would immediately follow up with, I need to go deeper. Like they would just doubt that they just had that experience. And so their response to us was, I need to go deeper. That couldn't have been real. And we were like, oh. <laughs> sure. So since we have each other, we decided to go with the surrogate route. So we do have a longer session where either Candy or I lead Candy or Laura and our client through the whole process at the same time. And so the client gets to experience the whole thing. And, but they also get the answers they want because the other person is in the bubble with them, um, being able to access the information if the person can't speak. I mean, some people just don't speak the whole time. I did, a, I, um, I put a friend into the bubble and she is from Brazil. So English was actually her third language. And she had all these experiences, but she couldn't communicate back out to me and translate because that switches, it's almost like it switches the side of the brain that's really in kind of seeing the pictures and things like that. So there's the big long session, we call it an assist. And then we have shorter sessions, which people call in for 15 minutes, which is what you did, Alyssa, mm -hmm. this office hours, we call them office hours. So they call in, one of us is already in the bubble and they just get to rapid fire, ask their questions. But we bring everybody that calls in in one evening together into the bubble at the same time. And so you kind of, they kind of like show up. Candy always sees them as showing up in like a, what do you do, Candy? Yeah, I, I see them. Um, it, there's usually like a campfire type setting in the center. And then I'll, as Laura, if she's leading the script, as she calls in their guides and higher selves, and I'll see them kind of step forward into the circle. And then I kind of see like, and I, it's not them personally, it's like their energy body. And then I'll see all of these aspects behind them. So it's, you know, their energy body and then their divine entourage kind of all show up and we end up standing in a circle Every time, so so far, I don't think I, we've done a single office hour session where I haven't seen us standing around some form of campfire. <laughs> and because we keep asking, like, what else? What other rules can we break? We also have a write-in session, and, and it it works. So every time we try something new, we're like, we wonder if this works, and it does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one, they just get to email us their questions. They fill out a form on our website, send us their five questions, and we record it. Um, what sometime when we're in the bubble and just send them the recording so they're not on the call with us but they are getting the information the downside is they don't get to ask any follow-up questions sure sure yeah, yeah and so the the quantum experience the bqh experience is comprised of some different pieces there's um a, a water ceremony that we do we'll, we'll either do it with a client if they're doing an assist with us or we'll do it on behalf of the clients that are going to be calling in for the office hours where we set an intention to connect to their higher wisdom and to bring forward practical information that can help progress them on their path or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And so we, we drink water when we do this intention setting so that we, you know, infuse ourselves almost like antennas. So we're able to tap into this info and, then sometimes we'll do a heart mind coherence exercise, especially if we're doing the assist. So if someone is going to go into the bubble with us, um, then we'll do a heart mind coherence where we start to pull the energy and the focus from the head to the heart, slowing down the breathing, connecting to the body. Um, if we 
get the sense that maybe we need to go a little bit deeper. Um, Laura sometimes, and I also will sometimes do a yoga nidra to further ground the person down into their body and get them out of their head. Mm -hmm. And then we have a BQH induction script that we use that takes you on, it's like a guided meditation, takes you on an experiential, an experiential journey, um, kind of frees you from the body at that point a little bit. So you start to feel the sensations of floating and um, then you're, you're able to kind of progress on a timeline a little bit. And, and then we just start asking your questions. So if you're doing an assist and you want to be in the bubble with one of us, you'll give us your questions in advance. So we can ask them on your behalf and play a little Veronica Mars where we, you know, do a little detective digging to try to get you the answers that you're looking for. But if you're on the call while Laura or I are in the bubble, then, you know, you can rapid fire your questions. I think we've had someone ask as many as 11 questions in a 15 minute session. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it can be pretty, pretty involved, even for not a lot of time, you can still get some really good info. And the assist, the full assist, we try to keep to about 90 minutes um, because we want to be respectful of people's time, their investment. Um, you know, it's, it's a great starting point if you're thinking about doing a full BQH that can last, you know, three to five hours, can be three to six hundred dollars. Um, it's a nice way to get an experience see what it feels like and, and to know whether you're ready to make that jump into something bigger. Um, so we, you know, we're trying to give people options to start experiencing what it feels like to interact with their higher self. And then at the end of every session, we always do uh, the BQH healing, which is beautiful. So if you experience it yourself, it's awesome, but we do it for the clients that call in or write in. We, you know, we ask them to energetically stick around for the healing and then we'll, we send sometimes targeted healing their way, maybe based on the conversation that we've had with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, I probably had 11 written down based on, you know, you kind of telling me how many questions, you know, could be through, but I found that in asking the handful or, you know, five or six I did, that the other questions were answered. That, yeah, you were you were really organized. It was good. It was good. <laughs> I was very organized. <laughs> we appreciate that. I, I'm glad. Well, that is one of the things I can do well. Um, so, any any final thoughts you want to share with our audience about um, just the energetic healing practices and getting in touch with their higher higher self? selves um and and we'll link to your website and all your information your facebook group um so, uh, into the show notes so that everybody can you know get in contact with you if they want but any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners yeah the the connection is there it's just a matter of clearing the debris that's just uh, that's blocking it and that includes being afraid of it, doubting yourself, worrying about what other people think of you, judging the information that's coming in. And I think that the best way or the easiest way to know is that it lights your heart up. So when you kind of think of, especially when you have like a yes or no decision to make, which one of those makes your heart excited or lighter in any way, even if it's relief, that's also a good sign that it's your, your higher self wisdom is your heart wisdom. It's, it's not different than that. So that's the place where you can find it is in your heart. Yeah. I, I mean, Laura, that that's perfect. That's exactly, you know, what we want people to realize is that this is, this is not something that is only available for a select few. I mean, everyone has the ability to chat with their higher self and, you're probably doing it and you're just not even really aware that the voices that you may be hearing or the feelings or the sensations or the nudges that you're getting are actually coming from your higher self, your deeper wisdom. Um, you know, we use BQH for a lot of different things too. We, we use it to tap into energies that are happening, trying to figure out, you know, are, are there changes coming or 
Are there things that we need to know about? Sometimes we even use BQH to discuss politics, believe it or not. So we've, we've got a YouTube channel we would love if your listeners would follow because we try to make entertaining videos um, that get people laughing. Uh, even if we're talking about things that may seem a little heavy, we try to bring a light spirit to it. So, um, you know, we'd love for folks to follow our YouTube channel as you guru. Yeah, we'll definitely link to that in the show notes as well um, and send that out on social media and stuff when this gets uh, launched. So um, I love having you on today. I absolutely adore both of you and definitely will share your work with people because I think it's so accessible the way that you've presented it. And I, I love when I've had my own personal experience because then I can share with people. And it's, you know, instead of, it's that whole, you know, I've had a personal experience. Here's what I experienced. This is why I suggest it and recommend it. But, um, and it's, you know, it's not something I do or probably want to do. (laughs) It's it's something that you guys are so great at and passionate about. And I think it's so helpful for everyone to get that connection and that insight and and learn to trust themselves which is what we were talking about earlier and i the way you have presented it um the information you're putting out there it's so wonderful so i encourage everyone to try a bqh session with you and we'll definitely link to how they can get in touch oh thank you so much alicia Alyssa. we really appreciate you having us on we loved working with you in a bqh session it was so much fun i would love to do another one with you whenever you're ready um but yeah what you're doing with your podcast is also great there are so many ways that people can heal and tune into what their body is telling them um that you know if if bqh is one of the options super if it is anything else that helps move the ball forward in making, you know, someone a happier, healthier human, then, you know, we're all for it. We support any modality that works. Yeah, definitely. Because that's why there's so many that exist. Mm -hmm. Different ones work for different people. So, um, and that's my intent to share a lot of these through this podcast. Well, thank you again for being on and I appreciate it. So I want to hear from all of you out there. What did you think of today's topic and conversation? Did you love it? So find me on Instagram or Facebook under Alyssa Finnig and direct message me. Or better yet, join the Wild Wisdom Collective group on Facebook. It's a free group. Chime in on the discussion and you can just search in groups. You'll find us on there. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and insight about today's discussion and also what else you'd love to hear about. And if you do love what you're hearing, take a moment on your smartphone, click the button to subscribe and write us a review so that we can continue sharing this with more and more women out there. See you next week at the same time with another incredible guest. Wild blessings.